Hi everybody, hello and uh, good evening and um, welcome to our live broadcast. Uh, my name is Jeremy Kevitt, uh, New School Officer with Educate Together and also uh, School Manager of Gorley Educate Together Secondary School. Uh, we're just going to show a little uh, agenda for tonight's meeting. So um, introductions first of all. So uh, I'd like to introduce just briefly Connor Berry, our New School Principal. Uh, Connor's going to be giving a presentation to us later on. Hi, Connor. Hi, Jerry. Good evening, everybody. I'm very excited to take up this role. Absolutely. And I'm uh, really looking forward to working with everybody in the Educate Together school and with the wider community. Uh, I'll be coming back to you in a little bit with a presentation about how school is going to function in September and hopefully answer a lot of the questions that people have been very good to send in about the school. I know there's a lot of excitement in the area and uh, it's very exciting times ahead for us. Okay, thanks, Connor. And um, once again, I'd just like to introduce Joanna Brady. Joanna is part of our, our special group of parents. We've worked very hard in the background to, to, to ensure that we were awarded with the school. So, welcome, Joanne. Thanks very much, Jerry. We're really looking forward to hearing the meeting this evening and finding more out about the new school. Thank you. And Joanne's going to be talking about a little bit about school transport as well. So, we're, we're, we're looking into that. So, Joanne's going to give a little bit of an update on that. Okay. So, just uh, for ourselves, um, I'm just going to give a brief admission update. And also, I'll give a brief uh, accommodation update, and um, Joanne is going to talk about school transport, and then we'll go into Connor. Connor will give uh, his presentation. I'd like to thank everybody who sent in questions. It was one of the things we asked for. So lots of people sent in questions, and uh, Connor has assured us that he's going to answer everybody's question in his presentation. Uh, so we're, we're all waiting for that. Um, so just, uh, just to start us off, um, I'm just going to give a, a little bit of an update on the admissions and the admissions policy. So um, today we have about 25, 26 acceptances and there's quite a few people who haven't made up their mind yet. So we have a little bit of news uh, later on that hopefully might change people's minds on that. Uh, the applications are still open, uh, so people can still apply for places. Uh, and the, the if you if you visit our, our webpage on the Educate Together website, you'll find full information there. And I'll show you a link to the um, Educate Together website uh, later on. Um, also, just scrolling along the bottom there, we have uh, the, the, the new school email address. It's the one that Connor's going to be using at the moment. So if anybody has any specific questions they want to put to Connor, please use goryetssinfo at gmail.com. And once again, we'll keep that scrolling at various uh, times during the meeting this evening. So uh, just to, to move, move us on a little bit, uh, I just want to talk about um, the accommodation for the school. Uh, and we were sort of sitting here be, at about five to eight. Uh, without any update for you, and then I got a phone call from Educate Together's Buildings Officer Noel Wall to say that the Department of Education are close to, to signing a lease for a property uh, in Gorey, uh, and we'll have more information on that later this week. So it's actually brilliant news that things are moving on the accommodation front. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where it is because I don't know where it is, uh, but as soon as that uh, information becomes known, uh, we will let you know straight away. Okay, so once again, good news on the on the accommodation front. So I just want to introduce now. Just Joanne is going to talk to us just briefly about the school transport situation and what we can do or what we have been doing uh, about it. Thanks, Jerry. Um, so in terms of the school transport, there's been a number of queries around this um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, parents are wondering about uh, bus routes and how the school will be serviced. At the moment, without a location, um, the service providers aren't really in a position to um, to engage uh, in terms of what what routes will be put on or what transport will be made available. Um, so, with that in mind, um, although Jerry has just said there that the location should hopefully be announced this week, and that will really help move things forward in the transport side of things. So, um, a number of parents who are concerned of this have agreed to come together and to form a committee um, where they can liaise with the transport providers, uh, both public and private, find out what options will be available to students traveling to the school, um, wherever that is going to be located in the first of all in temporary accommodation. Um, and it could also be a way of connecting individuals who may be interested in carpooling as well. So, for, to facilitate this then in the coming days, we'll set up uh, the committee 
And for anybody who wants to contact us about that, we'll have an email address that any correspondence about school transport can go to any queries that you may have. And we will update our social media with that email address and other posts then that um, uh, uh, about information that, that as it comes up in terms of the school transport. So um, if you keep an eye, an eye on the school, the Educate Together Secondary School Facebook page, um, we'll put the details up on that. So for anybody who wants to find out more, you can contact the committee that way. So that'll be in the coming days. I'll pass you back to Jerry now. Okay, thanks very much, Joanne, for that. Um, just in, in terms of keeping in touch with people, um, Facebook, we, we do have a Facebook page and uh, that's just scrolling on your screen now at the moment. If you haven't liked the page, page please do. Um, obviously, the email address that we're giving out as well, that's the new email address. And the website, uh, the web address for the Educate Together website for our page on it, it, it's actually quite long, so we've shortened it down a little bit. So it begins with HTTPS and dots and whatever. So just copy that. That's in the, in the, in the description. And it should also be in the comments uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, so listen, we're just going to keep moving along. Uh, and we're going to talk to Connor. So, Connor, um, welcome, Connor. So, you're going to give us a presentation on your vision and, and what we're going to be doing over the next uh, few few months. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. So, what I put together is I just put together a bit of a presentation for tonight uh, and and welcome everybody to this information meeting. And thanks for the questions that were sent into the email address. And I hope by what I go through tonight, it'll answer most of those questions that you have. Uh, if you have any uh, extra questions, by all means, you can send them into the email address that Jerry's putting up on screen. Um, so I'm just going to, to get started here. So in terms of Gory Educate Together Secondary School, what do we value? Well, we're going to be co-educational, multi-denominational, child-centered and democratically run. So they're the principal tenets of the Educate Together philosophy. And the school will provide a caring, nurturing, safe and supportive environment based on equality with positive teacher-student relationships. And we're going to create a school where no one feels like an outsider and everyone is supported to reach their full potential. So what we're going to offer in the school uh, in terms of choice and flexibility, and I know a lot of people are very interested to find out uh, in terms of subjects and courses and curriculum, what students are going to be doing. I'm going to get a little bit into that later on. Uh, the Junior Cycle Programme will be broad enough to offer a wide range of learning experiences to all, and there will be flexibility built into it to offer choice to meet the needs of the students. And everything we do in the, students, in the school is going to be student-centered. As you're going to see later, the student input will be uh, will play a large role into what students uh, study in school. In terms of quality, uh, the students will experience a high quality education. It'll be characterized by high expectations of the learners, quality teaching, and we will recruit quality teachers because people want to teach and educate together schools uh, and will be in the pursuit of excellence. In terms of creativity and innovation, we will be using tablets in the school. So there'll be many opportunities for students to be creative and innovative. Uh, through inquiry-based learning, through the use of technology in the classroom, and also the various different active learning methodologies that we will use in our classrooms. And that will lead into the engagement and participation, because this is absolutely key. We want the students to be engaged in their work, to be participating in their work, and to enjoy their work. So we'll use active, engaging teaching and learning methods. They'll be used throughout the curriculum, and this will encourage the participation. It'll generate engagement and enthusiasm for the children and it will connect also with life outside the school. We are preparing the students through the five or six years that are with us for life outside the school and the key life skills that they have to have. We're not just going to fill them up with knowledge, they're going to have to learn uh, key skills. So in terms of continuity and development from first year to sixth year, in terms of our curriculum, in terms of our dual assessment through both formative and summative assessment and the teaching and learning, it will enable our students to build on their learning to date, to recognize their progress in their learning, and to support their future learning by identifying areas that they need to improve as well. And all of this bound up in inclusive education. So the education experience in our school will be inclusive of all students and it will contribute to the equality of opportunity, the equal, uh, equality of participation, and uh, most importantly, the equality of outcomes for all the students. So people are very interested in subjects. So let me say from the beginning, in terms of a voluntary secondary school, we are bound by the guidelines laid down by the NCCA, which is the national uh, uh, curriculum assessment. So we will be studying core subjects such as Irish, English, maths, history, geography, science, ethical education and wellness. Uh, wellness is made up of PE, CSPE and SPHE and that makes up the wellness. They have to, students will have to study 400 hours of wellness between first year and third year for junior search. 
the optional subjects. I will be surveying the incoming students and the parents of the, the incoming first year group in September, and they will be surveyed about their preferences for optional subjects uh, that will be studied over a, a taster course when they come in. So they'll get to uh, have a little taste of a couple of different subjects as they come in for the first number of weeks. And then they'll choose two subjects to bring forward as optional subjects. But rather than list out all the, the possible subjects, those incoming students and parents will be surveyed on their preferences. And then uh, we will do our best to provide for all those uh, preferences. Where the flexibility comes into a junior start level is in terms of short courses. So these are courses of 100 hours that are studied, the 100 hours over the three years of the junior cycle. And the students may choose from a, a wide variety of areas such as coding, digital media literacy, philosophy, artistic performance. And again, the students will have choice there in what short course they take. And we will be looking at students taking two short courses over the course of the junior cycle. So there is flexibility and there's options there for students to choose something that they might have a specific interest in. Now, how classes will be arranged? Uh, the mainstream classes uh, in the school will be a maximum of 24, uh, where home economics is involved, that will be a maximum of 20. And then all classes will be mixed ability. So there'll be no streaming in the school uh, and all the students will learn with each other and from each other in classes. And uh, people would be very interested to know what's going to happen with students with any kind of additional needs. Well, there will be learning support in place in the school. Um, and much like you're probably used in primary school, students may be being removed from the class for uh, resource teaching, maybe one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. The same will happen at secondary level. So they can be removed in small groups or they might be removed one-on-one -on -one for some learning support depending on what their needs are. There'll also be team teaching where there'll be a second teacher in the classroom to provide extra support. Uh, some questions that come in around the involvement of NEPS and in regards to SNAs. So uh, once the Department of Education has released information on how the new SNA allocation model will work for September, uh, I'll then be in a position to apply for SNA hours for those students who will require it because the SNA allocation model is changing in all secondary schools this year in Ireland from September. Uh, but the department have not given out the information yet, even though I've been in touch with the special education needs officers and the National Council for Special Education, the NCSE, um, who would have all the, the um, allocation power around SNAs. It has to be decided at the Department of Education level first. Uh, with NEPS, um, somebody had asked about education psychology. There is an, uh, an education psychologist is attached to the school. It's within their remit for Gory Educate uh, Together Secondary School. And I've been in contact with them, so they, they are in place. Uh, in terms of uniform, in our schools, the students will not wear a uniform. However, there will be a dress code as, it, you know, students will have to wear clothes that are appropriate to school and it won't affect health and safety or anything like that. So the dress code will be drawn up um, with input from parents and students. Mobile phones, um, I suppose the easiest way to explain this is from when the students walk in the gate until they walk out the gate in the evening, they will not be allowed to use their mobile phone. If you as a parent feel that you want your child to have a mobile phone with them, for whatever safety purposes or the coming and going from school or, or collection points or whatever it might be, they're more than welcome to have a phone. It must be switched off. It must be in their bag and we can't see it during the day. Um, if it is, there will be sanctions there and there'll be confiscation of mobile phones. And again, there will be input by parents and students um, in terms of our mobile phone policy and, and how those sanctions will apply. And if parents need to contact students or students need to contact parents, that will all be done through the school office. Um, in terms of our behaviour management in school, there will, of course, be a code of positive behaviour that will be drawn up for the school and it will be reward based and at its core will be restorative practice. And restorative practice just ensures that if there is any issue that um, uh, putting in uh, back in the balance of the relationship between the teacher and student or between students or whoever it may be is ab absolutely at the core of how we will um, look at relationships in the school where there's any form of conflict at all. However, being a secondary school, of course, there will be rules and of course, there will be sanctions as well. They will all be explained to the students and the parents uh, as they come into the school. And we will have a ladder of referral, which basically means that teachers will deal with things at classroom level uh, and in terms of uh, pastoral care for your students as well. Uh, and it can be moved up to the class tutor. It can be moved up to the year head. It can be moved up to the deputy principal and ultimately up to myself as principal. So that is how the ladder of referral in terms of behavior and also pastoral um, concerns would work in the school. Uh, I know many of you are, are very uh, interested in what extracurricular activities are going to be involved. Um, as a new school starting in September, uh, there's no point in me laying out all the extracurricular activities we're going to do for students to come in and not be interested in them. So again, in terms of student voice, we will be surveying students in terms of what their own uh, interests are, and then we will make provision based on those interests. So I have a, a number of them laid out there. 
sport and music, drama, enterprise, science, art, creative writing, whatever it may be, we will endeavor to um, provide for students based on their interests once we know what the students are interested in coming into the school. And then finally, um, parents are very interested in how they might become involved in the school. And I suppose the thing I would say, the transition from primary school to secondary school is also a transition for the parents. Uh, and it's important that your children are given the space to grow and develop as individuals um, as they grow from children into young adults. So there are appropriate channels to get involved in the education of your child at secondary school level. And those will mainly be through the parents' council. Um, and if you so wish through the parents' council to put your name forward as a nomination for the board of management, because there will be parents' representatives on the board of management, um, they will have a direct say in the uh, policy formation in the school and the decisions taken at board of management level. All parents uh, will be uh, asked to be involved through surveys in terms of policy formation, policy review, and curriculum review um, at all stages throughout the school year. Uh, curriculum review would be when we would look at things like um, the start and finish times for the school day, the subjects that are provided, uh, the timing of classes, all those kind of things. So there will be uh, parental involvement there and also student involvement there um, in terms of all those areas. So um, that is kind of the broad strokes of how the, the school is going to operate next year. Uh, there will be a further meeting for the incoming uh, parents and students of first year in a couple of weeks. I'm just going to hand back over to Jerry about that, uh, where we might get into a little bit more detail with those students who are coming into the school in September. But thanks for your time. Thanks a million for everybody who sent in questions. If people want further detailed information, by all means, email the address that's on the screen. And uh, I'll endeavour to get back to you in the next couple of days. Thank you. On, on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, listen, thanks very much, Connor. Uh, that, that was very enlightening. Uh, as Connor said, we're going to be organising a much more focused um, meeting for prospective parents and students, hopefully within the next two weeks. And certainly, uh, once we get a confirmation of what the or where the accommodation for the school will be, we'll be letting people know, and we might meet possibly this side of Easter. But we'll keep everybody updated with that, and we'll also keep everybody. Uh, updated with all all developments as well. So um, so listen, uh, that's sort of all we have time for this evening. Uh, once again, it's a, it's a pleasure, and this is a force for educate together. We've never broadcast uh, streamed live before, so this is a force, and and uh, I hope it, it was it was helpful and and worthwhile for you listening. So uh, listen, don't forget to get in touch. That's our email address on the bottom of the screen. Uh, like or and share our Facebook pages and sign up to, up to our mailing list as well. And once again, we'll, we'll see you all very soon. And thanks for your attendance uh, this evening. Thank you.